Welcome back to my channel. Now, it's been a while since I've done one of these, but I posted on my Instagram saying, ask me questions, yay, and all of that exciting stuff. So I've selected a few already, and then I'm gonna go through my Instagram and find a few more bonus ones at the end. So the questions will pop up here, and we'll have a lovely time answering questions. So thank you for those who did send them in. Probably would have helped if I'd got my phone out my pocket so I was ready. Okay, here we go. First question is from Jack. DW underscore life he says have you missed diving now of course I've missed diving because you know it's just such a part of my life that I do every single day you know I get up I go to the pool I have lunch I go back to the pool and then I come home eat sleep that's kind of basically what happens during the week but at the same time I've been able to have so much fun during lockdown with my son Robbie got to spend so much more time with him with my husband with my mum as well so that for me has been a massive silver lining in all of this that I've been able to have so much more family time because with it being, well, was going to be an Olympic year, I would have been traveling here, there and everywhere, training camps, competitions, so the more time that I've got to spend together at home, it's just been awesome. Next one is from Bob C 3567 who says, who are you teaming up with for diving this year? Now it's the same Seguro partner that I had uh, last year, which is Matty Lee. Um, we've dived together, well we've not been diving together for that long, since like, well 2019 was our first diving season together and we qualified a spot for the Olympic Games, we won a medal at the World Championships. So uh, it's great to be able to train with him every day in London as well, because he moved from Leeds down to London to train with me, so that's been great. Um, I'm also gonna be doing synchro with Grace Reed in the mixed events in some of the World Series, maybe not all of them, uh, but it's a bit of more of the same. Basically what I was doing at the beginning of this year before um, lockdown happened. So I'm just gonna be working as hard as I possibly can so that we do a good job in Tokyo. Next one is from, oh really? NR8188059. That must have been a suggestion, I don't know what that was. Uh, who says, do you prefer to wear briefs or boxes? Now, that's a good question because and I don't think I've ever answered that. I do wear both. I kind of prefer to wear briefs. I just feel like everything's held together more nicely. And if I wear boxes, it's not doesn't tend to be the loose fitted ones unless I'm going to bed. That are like, you know, all airy and all that, especially in the summer. Uh, but the what then I tend to wear um, briefs or boxer briefs, usually. Next one is from I Mickey Mickey Six, <laughs> who says, if you hadn't chosen diving as a career, what would you be doing? There's a few things I would like to think that I would have done, but I don't think I would have worked as hard at school if it hadn't been for diving and teaching me, you know, commitment, dedication, time management, goal setting, all of that kind of stuff. I've always wanted to have been a, a pilot. It's something that I was really interested in growing up. Or a doctor, or I was a vet, or a marine biologist. There was all these different things that I was thinking. But then also I had a real uh, passion for Spanish. Uh, so I thought about maybe being a Spanish translator because uh, I was going to go to school, well, to university to study Spanish and law in uh, Plymouth, but then I didn't end up doing that because I was concentrating on diving. I mean, again, also photography I did at A-levels, which I really enjoyed doing. I think now it's kind of all fallen into place. Like, I would love to do anything to do with fitness, anything to do with, like, you know, personal training or TV presenting, post-diving. That's kind of the vibe I was thinking. Next one is from Engelsen. I think that's how you say it, 2019, who says, what is your drag name? What do you think about Canada Drag Race? I, I don't know about a drag name, but Canada Drag Race, I, I have actually been really enjoying it. Um, it's very different to the UK version. It's very different to the US version. It's weird to not have RuPaul hosting it, but I think, you know, they're doing a great job. My favorite at the moment is Jimbo, because I just think, like, I am so excited to see what she creates every single week and to see, and you know, it's always something that it blows me away. So, I mean, I filmed this before watching this week's episode, so who knows if she's still there. I'm hoping she will be and assuming she will be, but, you know, Jimbo is my favorite. And in terms of a drag name, I'm trying to think of something to do with a diver. Like maybe like Diana, Diane Veronica, and maybe like dive, so it could be shortened to like Di Veronica, Di Veronica. No. Why, um, or maybe I could just be like a one-liner, like splash, splosh, splish, splash, splosh. That's terrible as well. 
I don't know. If you've got suggestions, leave them in the comments. Next one is from Alex P. Prins, who says, How did young Tom come to diving anyway? Did you see it on TV? And actually, I... Well, I was swimming from a really young age uh, because I lived in Plymouth and my parents thought that it would be a good idea to know how to swim because we lived near the water. And when I was seven, we went to like a local swimming session and I saw people diving on the diving boards, doing somersaults and twists and all that crazy stuff. And I was just like, you know what? I want to try that. That looks like so much fun. So I went one Saturday morning, little old Tom, and loved it. And then went back the next week and the week after and the week after that and was just kind of just went from there. And I just fell in love with the sport. I mean, it hasn't always been in love. Next one is from Dear Rio. I think I said that right. It says, what's the best and worst thing uh, in the Mary life? Kisses from Lisbon. I'm yet to go to Portugal, which I feel like I should. But anyway, best thing about married life is that you get to share all of these adventures and all these journeys with someone and it's like you know you're in it for the long haul. I think that's something really special about that and is you know you've got a best friend, you know you've got a cheerleader and a biggest supporter which is something that is, I don't know, it always feels nice to have someone by your side to support you no matter what. And the worst thing, um, not putting mugs in the dishwasher, not putting mugs into the sink, leaving laundry on the floor, you know, that kind of thing. Next one is from HP Dives, who says, what's your scariest dive? I've had lots of scary dives in my diving career and anything new, and sometimes the easier ones are scary too. And I've had periods in my diving career where I've not wanted to do anything because I've been so terrified about going up onto the 10 meter. And I am still terrified about going up on 10 meter. It's a long way up. My scariest dive that I've ever, ever done was my back two and a half twist in two and a half because I had so many issues with twisting in my diving career and there's this weird thing getting mental blocks and standing on the end of the board and not being able to take off and it's it can be really scary. And then I ended up learning a different twister, the forward three and a half somersaults with one twist, which I guess is a scary dive, but it's also like just not scary, it's just hard and challenging mentally to like know all of the steps and to get it right. But for me, my scariest one is the reverse three and a half tuck. That might surprise some diving people because I do it first in my diving list. It's also my, one of my most consistent ones. It can be my favorite dive as well, um, but there's just something about the reverse one that I just always worry that I'm gonna hit my head. I think it's just a diver thing. Sometimes we just worry about silly things and I know that I never probably will, touch wood. I mean, I've said it now, bloody hell. But yeah, that's the dive that I would have any worries about. I have a pigeon looking at me right now through the window and it's really disturbing. Look, look, look. Can you see the pigeon? Hello, pigeon! <gasps> oh my gosh, it's coming to say hello. Are you coming to say hello? Next one is from Lou Bragantini, who says, why did you choose Robbie as a name for your son? Is there a particular reason? Now, yes, there is a, well, a massive reason, really. Uh, my dad was called Rob, and we used to call him Robbie Ray, uh, mainly because there was, um, you know, Miley Cyrus and Hannah Montana, and then his dad, the da her dad in it was called Robbie Ray. And we used, my dad used to do set karaoke, and we used to call him Robbie Ray because he used to think he was like able to sing, and he couldn't. So yeah, we used to call him that kind of as a bit of a joke, and then uh, it stuck. And then also Ray is a middle name that is in Lance's family um, back in the States, so it kind of just made sense to put the two together, Robbie Ray, and I don't know, now it just, it, like, I can't imagine him being called anything else now. He does just seem like a Robbie Ray. And Robbie, I just, yeah, I think it's a really cute name anyway. But also to be named after my dad, I think he's really special too. Next one is from some underscore beach 20 who says, will you have to start with easy dives again and build back up? The answer is yes. We always, if we haven't dived for a while, always start from the lower boards and work our way up doing easier skills before progressing up onto the 10 meter. We might do some of the easy dives off of 10 meter just to get our bodies back into the motion of things, but it will be at least a couple to a few months before we'll be back up on 10 meter doing the hard dives because our body has to be primed to be able to do that to avoid injury. So that involves lots of things in the gym, in like with gymnastics, strength and conditioning, cardio, uh, strength building, prehab, all of that kind of stuff so that we are ready to go up on there without actually hurting ourselves. Next one is from James underscore Haughty who says, how has learning the piano been going? And to be honest, 
I know I, I put in one of my videos, like I think it was just after Christmas or New Year or whatever it was, I started learning piano and I was obsessed with it and I absolutely loved it. This was before my knitting obsession. But obviously with lockdown and things like that, we've not been able to do the piano lessons that we wanted to do, like Lance and I both were going to learn. So unfortunately, that's been put on hold at the moment. But once things kind of like get back to a bit more normal, I'll be able to, one, have some more lessons, and two, give you a little update of how I'm doing. So watch this space. Next one is from Meg Palmer, who says, do you feel COVID has put more pressure on you for Tokyo 2021 due to not as much training? And I'd have to say, I think com the complete opposite. I think, I don't know what uh, how other athletes feel, but the fact that we were able to just start a diving season and all of a sudden it was just stopped, I think just puts things into perspective that, you know, there's more important things in the world and, you know, life is so precious and fragile and fleeting and we have to make the most of every single moment that we have with our loved ones. So I think, you know, it's just given me a sense of perspective of what matters most. And I've got to spend so much more time with my family, which I've really enjoyed. So if anything, it's taken the pressure off because it's given me a sense of perspective. So I think with that perspective, it's allowed me to, you know, just go, but be excited to get back to training, enjoying the process, enjoying the journey, uh, rather than just thinking, being so focused that you don't actually soak anything in. So I think it's actually been, in terms of my mental space of being able to step back, it's given me some nice perspective. We've got a question here from none other than the Olympic champion from 2012 in my event, from David Badaya, who said, what's the first getting dive um, that we're gonna do when we get in the pool? And theirs was a 205 on three meter, which is about two and a half somersaults. I don't know if they did it tuck or pike, but you know, that's quite an intense dive to do for the first time. And I don't know what mine's gonna be, um, but maybe it will be about two and a half, just because why not? And I'll film it and send it to you, David, because I think it would be quite funny to, and I, I hope you filmed yours, because if you filmed it, send it to me, so then I can send, buy one to you. We'll see who did it better. Although we don't really compete against each other anymore because David's now on springboard and I'm still up on platform, so who knows though, because David can always surprise us and come back up to 10 meter. We don't need to be doing that, David, okay? The final question is from Emma, ZCA, who said, or M's CA, I don't know how you want to say that, uh, it says, how is Robbie? And Robbie is absolutely amazing. He turned two last month and he is growing at a rapid rate, which is kind of crazy. He's now talking and, you know, saying so many new words every single day, putting sentences together. So he's like an actual full blown, like human being now, like being able to actually rationalize and have conversations with no matter how broken they are, but being able to actually communicate with him has been so, like, so great to just have a little insight into what's going on inside his head. Yeah, he's doing great. He's currently napping, which has been my time to work out, do videos, all that kind of stuff in that, like, hour that he naps. And he started to drop his nap, which is great, but, you know, it's, it means that there's less time in the day to be able to do the laundry, cook, clean, you know, how what everything you have to do while he's sleeping. So, but, you know, He's doing great. It's been an awesome period of time to spend with him. I tried answering as many of your questions there. I know that I didn't answer everyone, but you know, I'll do another one of these in a few months and hopefully there'll be a few more questions about different things and how things are going. But anyway, hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a comment below what you thought of the video, but also if you have any suggestions for my drag name. And in the meantime, I love you all. Stay safe, subscribe, and wear your mask.